Well, good evening, Calvary. Welcome to Wednesday night. It's glad glad to have you worshiping with us. We got several here live in, in the house with me. Um, and I hope we have many on Facebook. I just got a message from Beth Burkhart that she is watching live from Kentucky. And so I am, uh, I'm actually going to log in myself here in just a minute because I expect to have a, another friend from Ecuador with us tonight. And I want to see when she logs in. Is she, is she able to be with us? Uh, all right. We just, we just launched, so it ought to be coming up here quickly. So if you're on with us, welcome. Um, glad to have you. Nate, if you see uh, Evelyn show up, let me know. Um, so that's Javi's fiance is going to be, uh, be with us tonight as well, but via Facebook. So um, for those of you who don't know, um, or maybe you're on Facebook, Javi Pico, one of uh, our lead partner in Ecuador for our ministry trips. He, he organizes all of our travel, all of our motel rooms, all of our meals, all of our translators. Basically, he is our concierge for every, in, in our medicine, for everything we need while we're there. He is full-time in ministry. He's an Ecuadorian national. Continuing the work that we do when we partner with him uh, from all the Indiana churches uh, as we go to Ecuador to, to work and share the gospel and disciple people. And so very much appreciate Javi in, in his professional role, but also uh, as he's become a friend as well. And so he's with us tonight. He's in the States till December 1st, um, kind of raising money because he is a self-supported missionary. And uh, our church supports him. So thank you, Calvary, if you're part of our fellowship we tell you thank you. We appreciate uh, all that you do and your regular giving, but also your missional giving, and uh, makes it a blessing to be able to to uh, to have Javi and others that that we're able to support um, along with us. I want to give some prayer updates and requests as we get started, and then I'll introduce you formally to Javi in a few minutes, and he's he's going to uh, take over part of what we do tonight. And so, start with some prayer updates and prayer requests. Um, Harold Sudarth is still in the hospital. His lung has not inflated. They're telling him it needs to happen naturally. And so the next stage is to move him to uh, a nursing home for continued health recovery. So not permanent position, but more like a rehab scenario, but waiting for that lung to reinflate. Don't know where that's going to be yet. He thinks it may be somewhere uh around Community North or Castleton area. They're trying to trying to figure that out at this point. So keep Harold in your prayers. He's kind of frustrated and bored and all the things that happen when you can't get healthy and you want to get healthy. When your mind's strong, your body isn't. So keep Harold in your prayers. Um, Marcella, I just got asked about her. Um, Marcella Champion had a wire come loose from her double lung transplant that they used to sew her back together, basically. Um, they had to surgically remove that wire, and everything went smooth, perfectly. And so she is uh, in recovery now from that, but doing doing good and praising the Lord. So got that message just uh, 10 minutes ago from Marcella. So very thankful for that. Uh, Becky Alexander has her procedure that she's going to have to open up the duct that's, that's clogged um, Friday. Right, Polly? So pray for Polly. She's driving her to their appointment and transporting her. And for Becky as she goes through that and then recovers from it. So hopefully that will be able to reduce some of her pain and, and help her to have better health. And so we need to continue to pray for Becky. Um, Mike Kenny, who, who is a church member here, he doesn't live in this country. Uh, because we're on Facebook, I'm not going to say a whole lot more than that. He works um, in, in, in some difficult places and times at times. Um, we love Mike and his wife, Misty. Mike's brother-in-law uh, passed away due to COVID. I think 50 years old, uh, young kid, or, well, growing growing up, but younger, you know, kids still in the home. Um, and Mike is doing the funeral for his brother-in-law tomorrow night. And so uh, the prayer request is much of the family are atheist or non-believing. And so, um, and some not even accepting of the fact that he's a man of faith. So it can be a difficult situation. Um, I know Jim Bradway and I are planning to go over for the visitation and services tomorrow night. 
and then come back afterwards. Um, Jim will go back then over the weekend, spend time with family. They're in Day the Dayton area, Dayton, Ohio area. And so uh, just keep that whole situation in your prayers. The gospel will be presented and that hearts will change. But also for the grieving process of a 50-year-old who's died with, with wife and kids and uh, always difficult in those situations. In any situation, it's difficult. But uh, you know what I mean, especially in that, this situation. So prayers for him. Tim Cape, still recovering from double ear infection, having trouble hearing, but he is improving. So thankful for improvement. Needs to, needs to gain his hearing back. And uh, I've never had ear infections like that. My father-in-law says it's like taking an ice pick and jamming it into your brain. And he said that's kind of what it, you think, if you think about that, that's kind of what it feels like. So uh, not, not a comfortable illness. So keep Tim in your prayers. What else we got tonight on the prayer side? Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. David Herrera, his wife Tatiana, um, are back in Ecuador. Tati went in this weekend to the hospital for some tests. They, they told her she was going to have to stay on bed rest in the hospital through the duration of the pregnancy um, just because of health concerns. Sunday, um, they thought they were going to have to do an emergency C-section. They took her to do the C-section. Before they did it, she stabilized, baby stabilized. Uh, maybe they jumped the gun a little bit, according to David. Uh, got a little bit too excited too quickly. So he, he's asked for prayer. Uh, so the thankfulness is they did not take the baby early. She's stable. I talked to him this morning. She's still stable. Had a good night. Everything is going well. Um, but the prayers are that the medical care that she gives will be quality, that she receives will be quality care, that they won't have another rush to C-section without doing all the proper testing and everything uh, to make sure it's necessary at, at that moment. They do think it'll be necessary early, but they want to get the baby to, y'all ladies know better than I do what the magic numbers are. I think it's 35 weeks, something like that. And so she's not quite there. They need at least four more weeks um, of the baby growing in the womb to be viable with lungs and everything um, outside the womb. So... Prayers still needed there, but thank you for praying uh, for them. And uh, on a on a positive note, a praise note, the uh, you know faithfulness of God's people. Um, money keeps coming in for him, and his support's in place, and very thankful for that. And so uh, um, that's been a blessing. And so we will keep keep doing all that we do, and um, got so, got got so many. Giving opportunities. The Lord, ha Lord has overwhelmed us, right, with, with giving opportunities. Um, we found out yesterday at Crossroads Baptist Association annual meeting that um, everything went well at the annual meeting. Things, things, things were good. Fellowship was sweet and strong. I had a great worship experience with, uh, with, with the group of pastors and, and others who were there. Um, the Baptist Center will be doing their normal Christmas stuff that we gather every year. This year we have... Jello pudding, powder pudding, the the boxes. And so, Allison, we put more information out on that this weekend. But uh, um, I don't think there's any particular flavor. I think it's just boxed Jello pudding. And you're probably going to ask me what size. I'm going to tell you I don't know. I would say whatever the standard smaller size is is probably what they want. Um, but she'll put more information out on that this weekend, Sunday, so that, that you... Uh, You'll have that in front of you. Uh, they also will be taking Christmas box, shoe box items. We're not wrapping the shoe boxes, just very similar to last year, but they want the same stuff you would put in a shoe box. And they're going to let the moms basically shop for the kids out of that stuff. And so you can, you can still put it in a box if you want to. Just don't, don't wrap it because they're going to open it up and set it out and that kind of stuff. But... All the same things you would put in a shoe box. Y'all, again, you know more about that than I do. Socks and underwear and candy. Same things you don't put in there. No guns, no knives, no sharp objects and shiny things. I don't know. Um, yeah, again, y'all you know the things to do, not to do. So Allison, my wife, will have more information on that again on Sunday. But some good things happening and some good opportunities to continue to serve in the community and in our area so a lot, a lot of blessings, a lot of, a lot of opportunities. How about praises? How's God blessed you? Or, or prayer requests, praises or prayer requests.
We have beautiful music in the background. We asked for music in the background. We got it. It's awesome. If you're not here, you don't know what's going on. So Facebook people, come. We love you in person. Polly? It is a praise that David was able to be there with his wife, especially with these progressions of concern. So, uh, very thankful for that. He's very thankful. And he, in fact, he, he's been sending me messages uh, asking me to extend his thanks to the church and his appreciation for what we've been able to do for him. So, prayers, prayers, prayers. Prayers are top priority. Everything else is secondary. Prayers are top priority. Okay. Anybody else? Praises or prayer requests? I don't see her yet. You're going to have to invite her on to Facebook. She's on. Ah, hello, Evelyn. Welcome. We are glad to have you joining us from Ecuador. It is good to, uh, to have Javi with us. We've uh, enjoyed him uh, Sunday night and looking forward to hearing from him tonight. And so she's not uh, back there. I'm looking at the camera because that's the Facebook thing. Everybody's looking to see where I'm looking because I'm looking over their heads. Um, Evelyn, thank you for, for joining us and uh, looking forward to when you and Javi are able to get married. We're excited for you guys and your engagement and uh, your ministry together as you've already started down that path. But we'll continue that. And uh, uh, again, it's, it's good to have you with us in service tonight. Javi will be speaking here as soon as I finish praying and uh, sharing with the congregation. So good opportunity for you to, to watch him in action while he's here in America. So... Uh, Javi is, or uh, Evelyn is his girlfriend, now fiance, but also one of the one of the translators has worked with us and with David Wilson and, and the mission for, for several years now. And just a, a fantastic godly woman with with fire uh, for, for the gospel and does a great job. One of the early people that I worked with who helped me figure out how to work through the the David's method of going through the Bible and you know, pointing me in the right place when I didn't know what to do next. So, very much appreciate all that she does. All right, guys, join me as I pray. And uh, we will uh, uh, turn it to Javi next. He's going to share with us. Father God, thank you for another opportunity to be in your house tonight. Thank you for your word of truth that challenges our hearts and guides us as we, as, as we learn to live for you. Uh, learn to become more like you. Learn about you. Thank you for the revelation of truth through, through Scripture. Thank you for the relationship we have uh, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. For salvation that comes only in His name. Father, we thank you for friends around the world that we've been able to partner with. That we've been able to minister with. That we've been able to laugh and, and eat with. And all the different things. Father, we thank you for those who are here tonight. Uh, for, for Jim Serber, we, we, we lift him up for his heart. That uh, the AFib would go away. That the rhythm would return. That he would be, uh, again, uh, fully healed. Um, and able to have energy and, and, and the, the, the uh, life that he desires to, to be able to live each day. So we ask for your healing on him. Father, we, we, we lift up uh, um, Brian Burkhart as he's sitting on an airplane uh, waiting for the weight to be fixed so he can fly out, out of Atlanta and begin his ministry uh, in Africa this week. We just ask that he would have safe travel, safe flight. Uh, that you would just be with, with, with the team, with him, with all those who will be ministering through, the, through, the, through the, the fire ministry that he's a part of. Uh, but we just ask your blessing uh, as they go and as they serve. Father, we, we, we thank you for the good news from Marcella and for the upcoming good news we'll have after Becky's surgery. We, we trust you in this. Continue the good work that you've begun in us as we work together for your kingdom. We ask that you would help us to persevere, that you might see it through to fruition. That we would see the lost saved and the saved discipled, baptized, congregationalized, and sent out. To continue the work that you've begun in us. Lord. Bless this hour tonight. In prayer and fellowship. And in teaching. And sharing from the mission field. It is our desire. That you'd be glorified among us. In us and through us. As we meet together in your house. 
through technology. Bind us together that we may serve you well. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Javi, will you join me? I've asked Javi to speak to us again. Um, he spoke to us a little bit Sunday night. If you were here, you may hear some of the th same things over again. If he can remember to say the same thing twice, I can't. So <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to him, and I'm going to have a seat. And he's going to share with you uh, from his heart. Um, and then he's also got a, a scripture lesson to share with us as well. This is all you. So, Nate, you'll be able to focus in on him as soon as I sit down. But, Javi, thanks for being here. Look forward to hearing from you tonight. Thank you very much, Pastor. So, um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me tonight again. It's a pleasure for me to be here and share with you this moment. You know, um, our Lord, He's almighty. He's awesome. Because, you know, I'm from Ecuador, down in South America. And I, now I'm here with my family because I feel that you are family for me. You know, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. If, even when we are passing through something bad, um, we are praying for each other. So how wonderful is that? So thank you, Lord, for, for, for this opportunity because I'm here with you guys. Well, I'm, I'm going to share with you some things about Ecuador. As uh, Pastor uh, Roger mentioned before, uh, we are working in, in the mission field in Ecuador. So, but the Lord lay on my heart tonight to, to read a verse that is speaking to every one of us. If somebody can um, read, please, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. I know maybe most of you are related with this, is familiar with this uh, verse, but... I'm going to get there, and I'm going to read it, Javi, because I'm on microphone. Okay. And then I'm going to grab a microphone if you have other verses so sure. that they can read it. Thank you. Paul, we'll have to turn another mic on on the soundboard. Matthew 28. 19 and 20. All right. I'm a little slow. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, great commission, right? We've been yeah. doing this for a while. I should have that memorized. I wasn't thinking, though. I was, I was flipping and not thinking. Here we go. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. So, as you see, this is a command that the Lord is asking us to go and accomplish so this is what we are trying to do with you guys because um we are one team you are here you are in the states and maybe most of you 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 got the desire you got the call to go and do missions but sometimes for any reason you can't but the lord is using you guys through your prayers to be with us down in ecuador and work in this mission work so I really appreciate all that you are doing, guys. So we count on, on your prayers. And when we are in Ecuador, as this verse, especially 19, is saying, we are making disciples. Because it's not only to go there, share a prayer, ask somebody else to repeat a prayer, and that's it. We need to make disciples. What that means, we need to follow them up. After they know about the gospel and they know about the truth and they, and they are born again. So then we need somebody down there to keep following them up. So that's our duty down in Ecuador. We are for with all the missionary trips that you already did in Ecuador. You reach a lot of people, especially in the coast, in Tonsupa. So we are there. Um, making disciples. We are taking them further. What I mean is taking the next step. Teaching them what's next for a new believer. So I'm counting on you guys for me to keep uh, praying for this ministry. And I'm going to say hello to my lovely fiance, Evelyn. So she is, a, we both are in charge of this ministry for the glory of the Lord. I didn't expect to be, you know, here talking to you. 
Um, I'm a computer guy. I got a degree in, uh, in uh, computer science, but who cares about it? When you got the call to serve the Lord, that's what really matters. So we are able to work in Ecuador in uh, those three regions. So most of you know is the coast, the highlands, and in the jungle. So in order to keep working, um, I mean, reading from God's word, I'm going to ask Pastor again if you can read uh, something from um, John 4.35. John 4.35. Yeah, if second. somebody can help me. More background music. Yeah. I got Jewish Bible, so you don't want <laughs> John 4.35. Oh, we got one. Miss Polly. John 4.35 says... Don't you say, there are still four more months and then comes the harvest? Listen to what I'm telling you. Open your eyes and look at the fields because of the harvest. They are ready. Amen. So, in Ecuador, I know uh, this crisis, this pandemic is hitting hard all over the world. But, you know... Sometimes people, we, we, we are just expecting something happen in our lives, and then we start looking for a savior. So that's what is happening right now in Ecuador. Everybody after this pandemic, they are desperate to know more about, you know, spiritual things. So now is the time that the harvest is ready. So the Lord is telling us in that verse that uh, it's ready, and we need to do something about it. When I'm saying something is to go and make disciples and share the gospel with them. Um, in Ecuador right now, um, in order to get into Ecuador, you guys uh, need to, you don't have restrictions. The only thing that you need in order to go and do missions over there is if you got your vaccination card, if you don't have it, it's okay. You can get a test. Um, as, as long as you get a negative COVID test, then you are okay to go into Ecuador. And uh, we are going to uh, take you and we are going to work and serve alongside you in Ecuador. Um, if somebody else can help me reading Luke 10, 2, please. In a minute, we're going to start um, with the Q&A time. So... Luke 10 2. Yeah, Larry. I have the same problem. He told them the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers unto his harvest. So that's that is my, my petition tonight for you guys. To keep praying for for the mission work, but start thinking to to travel and and, and do missions with us in Ecuador. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know about the, the places that we are working already in in Ecuador. In the three three regions that we are working in, uh, we got the jungle, the highlands, and the coast. In the jungle, the place that you already are working. It's uh, Tonsupa, and now we got a new place. It's called Las Brisas. In that specific place, uh, Pastor Patricio, which is one of our ministry partners over there, so he is starting the, a new work. He is working in this community. He is sharing the gospel with them. Even um, some people donate a piece of land in order to build the building over there uh, and have the, the church in that place. So there's a lot of things to do over there. Uh, you know, the Bible is telling us also to look for the man of peace. We are doing this um, work with uh, some guys in Ecuador that the Lord just 
putting into our road, and we are uh, working with them. One of them is George. He's a, it, it's a gringo name, but his name is George. So he's, he's working over there with us. And we are, in the first place, we are teaching him because the idea is make disciples that they can make disciples. You know what I mean? So he is going to be there taking care of this. So um, in the Highlands, we are working with the Pastor Freddy. He, he is uh, another ministry partner, and he is uh, working in this new place. He is living in Pelileo. The church is located in Pelileo in the Highlands. By the way, it's a beautiful place that you guys are going to enjoy a lot. In that place, uh, there's a community, an indigenous community uh, called Wamangloma. People from that community, the president is asking Pastor Freddy to go and use the facilities over there and start Bible studies and start working with the youth and with the kids. So um, we are asking your prayers for this specific place because, you know, the doors are open. As, as the, the Bible is saying, the harvest is ready. And we need to keep working for the Lord. Finally, in the, in the jungle, uh, we got a new workplace. It's called Tuntiak. Again, it's an a indigenous community in, in the jungle. So what is the jungle for us? It's um, the flat land after the Andes, all the way through the Amazon region, in, in order you can have a, an idea where is the place that we are working. So... Um, in this community, we got another man of peace. We are working with him. We are um, actually, we are going to visit them uh, on December because we need to keep um, getting ready the ground for the missionaries coming. So pretty much that's the report from Ecuador. I don't know, guys, if you have any questions about it, if somebody wants to need more or, you know, better way to know something more about Ecuador, I'm ready to to answer those questions. All right. Ooh, how about tripped over my own stool? Um, in the Bible study part, I just want you to know everything you talked about tonight, thanks what I preached over the last four weeks or so. <laughs> so you really? did good. Oh. Good. I think he's been trying to steal my, my sermon material. <laughs> Do you have a question, Jan? Yep, me. Oh, yeah. When you talk about the jungle, is it the jungle we think of with vines and real thick foliage? Is that the kind of place you're talking about? And yes. That, where the town, the, is that Tonsupa? Where, is Tonsupa in the jungle? Okay. Tonsupa, the place that you are working already, is in the coast. So what is the coast for Ecuadorians? We got the ocean line, the shore, all the flat land through the foot of the big mountains in the Andes, that area we call the coast. The mountains, it's the highlands. And in the other side of the mountains, from foot of those big mountains, all the way through the Amazon River, through Brazil, that area is the jungle. So one of the, one of the things that my first trip surprised me, because I'd heard him talk about the jungle, and I'd heard the description said before, but I was still think in vines and trees monkeys and all the fun stuff it's more mostly i think what we would have called the piedmont the the foothills as you come out as you get to the amazon basin you do get what we think of as the real jungle but majority of it is civilized and, and cultivated yeah. and that's right it's just the west side of the mountains mm -hmm. yeah so i'm sorry the east side of the mountains i get my yes, directions yes, yes, right properly yes. good Another question? Yeah. Yeah. We're doing mics tonight. Well, actually, I just wanted him to uh, reiterate what he had said Sunday evening about the different regions and, like, the controversies that go on within those communities. You know, you talk about, like, the Hatfields and McCoys type thing. And the voodooism that's going on, you might elucidate that for the people. Also, as part of that, Javi, some of the uh, we, we were talking about some of the uh, uh, current political 
situation that needs prayer, the indigenous um, uprising? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you know, every time that we got a new president in place, um, most of the um, indigenous communities, they are um, demanding things from the new government. So what's the way to, to demand is like blocking the roads, making a strike and trying that the new president uh, can accomplish what they are asking. Right now in Ecuador, um, there are some conversation in between the new president and the indigenous leaders. So what are, what are they asking right now? They are asking to um, go down with the fuel uh, prices, you know? Even Ecuador is, we are, we got plenty of oil in underground. We got uh, high prices over there. So they are trying to get those prices down. So right now they are demanding that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's another um, thing for your prayer request uh, because we need to pray even for our authorities. That's right. Here in the US, back in Ecuador. So that's a, a, another thing. What you said is like, um, there's a tribe, the Waoranis in Ecuador. Maybe most of you know about the five missionaries that have been killed like many years ago. Um, Jim Elliott, Nate Saint. So that tribe over there is, um, most of them, they, they know the gospel already. They are Christians, they are believers. But there's another, let's say maybe the 50 other percent of them, they are not believers. So when we are, um, when people, missionaries are teaching them, sharing the gospel with them, they really need to know about the culture, how to get. They need to understand the culture. Why is this? It's not because the culture is going to change the Bible. The Bible is going to change the culture, but you need to understand that culture. Uh, you know, as, as you said, the Waoranis, they are um, a very violent tribe. They are, you know, killing each other for no reason. Sometimes it's because you, you took a monkey that he was trying to, to hunt. So, you know, they start killing each other. But it's, it's not different, you know, even with the, with the story about the, the McCoys and the Hatfields here, maybe you can you know, understand a little bit better about this. You know, violence everywhere. Even if, you know, Chicago, Illinois is close to this place, even with the gangs, the gangster over there, you know, everything is violence. So um, in order to be a missionary on the ground, you have to understand the culture. So then you start working, but at the end, the Bible, God's word is the one who is going to change the hearts and is going to change the people once you get it, when you understand that there is a savior, that he died for us. Hmm? So one of the beautiful things in our partnership with Ecuador, with the translator staff that Javi has been able to put together over the years with Dave Wilson, is we don't have to know that cultural impact as as well, we learn it a little bit as we're there and we try to be sensitive to it, but they help bridge that gap for us. And, and, and so, because they know it, they live there, um, they speak the language, they have a shared history, they're able to help us to do things the right way as we share the gospel. And so, uh, it's just a beautiful partnership we have um, with On Mission 2 and Mission Connection um, to be able to take you and I, people who, who who may not feel comfortable or confident or equipped, and to be able to go and come home saying, wow, that was really easy. I could do that at home. It's pretty neat to see God work that way. And that it's possible because of these partnerships. Things he's saying are true about knowing and understanding culture, but they help bridge that gap for us. We're not on our own to figure it out. Yeah. Again, that's that's the beauty of this partnership. Yes, because, uh, you know, as soon as you get in Ecuador, we are uh, receiving you at the airport. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to give you an orientation. So how is the culture in Ecuador? What do you need to do? What do you don't need to do? But, yeah, 
our job in Ecuador as missionaries is to start building relationships with people in the places that we are working. So no worries for you, but you know, you, you, you are going there, you are sharing the good news from the gospel. So that's what you are doing because we already um, took care of that part, you know, building the relationships and opening the road for you guys. Um, I'll go Dan, then I'll come back to Larry. Uh, the other night you said that uh, they accept the gospel from gringos quicker than they do their fellow uh, citizens. But did you also mention one of the groups that uh, are trying to uh, open up the hearts of children by giving them candy? Mm. And is it something that we can donate to now that you can take a suitcase full or something like that? Thank you. Yeah, um, we got uh, many projects in place already in Ecuador. So, uh, for example, I didn't mention the other night that uh, we are working alongside, a, it's an orphanage, but it's a foster house. So we are working with, with, with those kids. They are basically teenagers that they, they are kids having kids, you know, it's like teenagers with, with new kids, newborns in there. So uh, we are helping them out as well. And um, what is this project that we are trying to reach the three regions, including the orphanage, the foster house, is that, you know, here in America, um, and I, I already told this, but I'm gonna repeat it. Uh, when you are giving to a kid the, the latest PlayStation, so he's gonna be super excited that, oh, what a gift, Merry Christmas. But in Ecuador, we are providing a candy bag, and a small one. It's, it's just the cost is $1.50, maybe $2. And if you are giving this candy bag to a kid, they are gonna be super excited about it. So that's, that's the project, the Christmas project that we are running right now is to try to raise some funds in order to get the candy back in Ecuador. Because uh, if, I'm, if you're, you want to send some candies with me, my suitcase is gonna be full, and maybe I, I need to pay over, wait for it, so. <laughs> yeah, so he can buy the candy cheaper in Ecuador, it, so. If you want to support, you can do that uh, for, for Calvary. You can do it through donating to Ecuador, write candy on your offering envelope. We'll know how to get it there. If you're doing it, Facebook, if you want to do it directly, um, I think you can, on Mission 2, do they have a giving line? Yes. On yes, Mission 2 dot? Uh, O-R-G. O-R-G. On Mission 2 dot O-R-G, they have an online giving platform. And that's our U.S. side of what Javi does in Ecuador, Missions Connection. And so those funds would then be received and recorded. They can still credit you for it if, you want, if you're interested in that. And you, they'll give a, uh, you'll have an, I think you have an opportunity to put what you want to donate toward on there. There should be a line. That's very important because, you know, O Mission 2, he's, uh, he's basically, he, right now he's focused on um, training the pastors. So, if, but if you, if, if the, the Lord is laying on your heart to donate something for this uh, Christmas project with kids, you need to say it. This is for uh, Ecuadorian Christmas project. So, then you know that your money is going to be there working for those kids. So, if you're a Calvary family, and so I'm saying this more for the Facebook friends, um, if you're a Calvary family, just do it, run it through us, we'll get it to the right place without causing the confusion. If you're on Facebook and you can you can still run it through Calvary if you want to, just write Ecuador Christmas gift, or you can do it directly through onmission2.org. Be sure you identify Ecuador Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, in the in the jungle we got a community. They have uh, 300 kids in that place, but we are trying to reach the three regions. So we are talking about 300 kids in every single region. That's a total of 900 uh, candy bags. So that's so, what they're looking for. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just uh, sharing this project with, with, with you guys, with other churches. So, you know, together we can do more. 
Larry, you had a question. Let me bring it to you. Obviously, you have to be fluent in uh, Spanish as well as English. Um, do you uh, do your missionaries and your translators speak other dialects and and uh, languages in that area to make further connection? Very good question. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, I'm gonna talk um, from me. Yeah, it's 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 a gift from the Lord to to speak in two languages. Actually, I'm consider myself I'm speaking a broken English, but uh, you know when you are working for Him, He is the one who is talking to the hearts. So, um, our ministry partners, our translators back in Ecuador, we are in order to work with them. We are requiring two things in this ministry. One is to speak in English, of course. But that's the 50% only. The other 50% is to be a good Christian. You know, know about the gospel. Because, you know, guys, at the end of the day, you are making such an effort sending missionaries to Ecuador. You are um, giving your time, your resources, your money, your people over there. So it's, it's not good if we once you reach Ecuador and you are there, an interpreter, a translator is going to, the, the, you know, deliver a bad message. So we are one team. So uh, we are delivering the good gospel message. That's our duty as a team. In Ecuador, we got people, for example, um, Evelyn. She is speaking, uh, she speaks another language. She speaks a little German. I know it's not required in Ecuador, but our other translators, for example, Patricio, we call it Pato, he is an indigenous from the highlands. So he speaks in um, Quechua. So when we really need to, you know, connect it with people in there, he is the one who is helping us to do this. But anyways, in Ecuador, we got, over 20 different dialects or languages right there. But all of them is speaking in Spanish. So it's easy for us to communicate with them because they understand us fully. So even most of the jungle indigenous tribes that they would have interaction with speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. The ones that wouldn't speak Spanish, we really don't have interaction with at this point because the government uh, limits that access. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know uh, Pato speaks Hindi. David is learning Japanese. You said you were learning Quechua. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a lot of variety. Not needed there, but just because the Lord has blessed these people with the gift of language. So the question, because uh, I didn't run back there with the mic this time, was are there other nationalities in Ecuador that you communicate with? Uh, nationalities? What? Oh. Like are, are there Japanese people groups? Are there Chinese people groups? Oh, okay. No, we got our local ones. It's just the indigenous from those places speaking in different languages. Nothing to do with German or Japanese, but locally. Mm -hmm. Not a lot that we've seen, at least, or interacted with when we've been there. Not a lot of, like, other nationality groups in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. That's right. At the, at the, at the coast, um, you, you see more of the, of the variety, maybe, of nationalities. Um, well, in the northern area of Ecuador, in the coast... Uh, uh, we got a lot of um, Afro-Ecuadorian people. So some of them, they speak in a different dialect. So, um, yeah, you know, Ecuador is it, it's a tiny country with a bunch of different nationalities. We, we call them la nationalities. That's why I was thinking, so maybe they are the ones that you are asking. But, yeah, we are, we are trying to reach them. Uh, but most of them, I mean... All of them speaks in Spanish. One of the places we see as we leave Ecuador on most of our trips is uh, they have a, a museum-type 
place called the center of the world. Um, but next to that is like the United Nations of Latin America. Mm -hmm. um, so Ecuador is a very uh, centralized, safe place that a lot of the countries would gather to do political type stuff. So mm -hmm. there is some of that that does happen. Yep. Other questions? I think we have a few more minutes. Yeah, let me. When you're trying to uh, convert or open up the minds of those that practice voodoo, how do you, what approach do you use? How can you reach those kind of people? Okay. Um, you know, they are not practicing voodoo in Ecuador, but we got uh, witchcraft. You know, in most of the indigenous communities, we got the shaman, the witch doctor. So he is the one who is telling the people about different stuff. But, you know, in every single region, we got different people, different communities. So especially in the jungle, we got these uh, indigenous communities that they are um, practicing these kind of things, the witchcraft, you know, that kind of uh, things. When we are there, we have to share the gospel from zero. It's different because they believe still and they are worshiping uh, the God of the waterfall, the God of the lightning, the God of the thunder. My favorite so, is the God of the earthquake. Uh, we got that in the highlands. Yeah, believe me. We got an <laughs> idol for every single place. So in the jungle, answering your question... When we are sharing with them, we need to explain from zero, telling them that there is a creator who got the master plan. So Aiden and Eve, then sin, then, you know, the master plan of salvation, Jesus Christ. So that's the way that we are sharing the gospel with them. It's a different ball game in the highlands because most of the people in that area, they are Catholics, but they are um, big on idols. They are worshiping, especially Mary. So over there, you need to explain to them what, it, what the Bible says about it. Because um, they are not worshiping maybe the, um, you know, the waterfall, the earthquake, but they believe in Mary and they are praying to her. So when you let them know, based on Acts 4.12, that it is just one name, give it to the to the man is Jesus Christ, the only one, the only Savior. So, but we are sharing the gospel and we are, we are letting them read by themselves. So the Holy Spirit is the one who is working on them, you know, when they are reading from the Bible. A lot of foundation work. This, these are not short conversations. There's no bumper sticker gospel in Ecuador with, with these partners. We, it, it's digging in, it's setting foundations. A gospel conversation in Ecuador from our team with, with our partners is going to last at least two hours, maybe longer, um, to set the foundations, to build up on those foundations, and to bring it to a place of expecting a response. And this is one of the cool things that, that I love about, about Javi's team is not only do we expect a response, but they take down the information and give information about which church is closest to them that we're working with. We have pastor partners everywhere we work, church partners. They're expected, if they receive Christ as we're sharing the gospel with them, they're expected to be at church. And they're followed up on. So that's, that's a little bit different than having a crusade mentality of raise your hand if you got saved and then you never get to see him again. They're, they're trying to build in some accountability. And we leave them the Bible that we use to share the gospel with them. Uh, tabbed and highlighted so they can go back and review the scriptures that the Lord used then through us to, to change their hearts. Yeah, that, that's very important that you mentioned, Pastor. Uh, because, um, you know, even uh, most of the people when they are um, missionaries here, sometimes... People, we are getting nervous to share the gospel. Maybe we, we, we don't have the, the right words to share. But back in Ecuador, our team, the ministry partners, the translators, they are helping you, taking you out to that road. 
and with this Bible mark and tapped, then you're going to know that, oh, I don't need to uh, remember all those verses because we got all of them, you know, labeled in the Bible. So then it's, it's easy to share the gospel in that way. Nate, you got a question? Okay. Will groups coming over specifically work with a pastor in the jungle area? The new ministry. Well, this is a new area. It's a new mission work that we are working already. We already reached the, the men of peace in that area. So that's why it's so important for us to go there and reach the lost. So, you know, the Lord is, as we go, he is providing that man of peace. And then we are training him because how he is going to teach others if nobody is teaching him. You know what I mean? So um, that's, that's the, the new work in the jungle. But we are, um, we are just start that work over there. So in many of these works, you know, as Dave Wilson was on the mission field and began to let the Spirit lead him through the, this type of discipling and church planting, um, we think of a church being a building, you know, it's white painted, it's got a cross on the front of it, and all, you know, we, that's the way we think, because that's what we're used to. Um, it may be a, well, more what you would think of as a, a cinder block garage clubhouse that all of a sudden they, they put some plastic chairs in, and now it's a church. Um, it might be somebody's home that's got a big enough gathering room that that's where they're worshiping. So it's not always what we think of in terms of church from the American viewpoint, the, the North American viewpoint. But it, it, it's often small group gatherings in the beginning. And it's often house church oriented more than it is what we think of as corporate church. Um, it's not that Ecuador doesn't have those bigger churches and locations and facilities. That there, there are some of those. But these works are, are foundational, grassroots Oftentimes, more house church we're in. I do want to remind us, we, uh, as a church, when we first went to Mont Montalvo, um, the Lord gripped Paul's heart about ministering in that community. And uh, we began to support some different activities and ministries there, uh, rebuilding their playground, providing rent and utilities uh, for a church building. And we found out that they were worshiping in a facility that flooded, and they were showing up for church knee deep in water and worshiping the Lord and we've been very blessed Calvary one of our members donated to allow them to move into a facility that was dry to move out of that place into another facility and so um, I do want to throw that imagery imagery out there that as you think about and as we think about church planting in Ecuador we're not thinking about building a 300-seat sanctuary, even a 100-seat sanctuary with pews. We're thinking, can we put a tin roof on a structure where people can meet outside of the sun beating down on them um, and be able to, to be together, to, to do gospel things, to, to, to pray together, to sing together, to, to read the word together, and study, to do those gospel things. And that's really the focal point in the beginning. And it may look very different than what we're used to. Yeah, uh, another thing that is neat uh, about the, the, these cultural things is like, yeah, uh, you need to understand that uh, reality, the culture in Ecuador, yeah, and, and that's right. So we, we don't uh, have uh, already a, a building over there, but we are on that road, you know. First of all, being the church that the Lord called us to do, the people gathering together to worship in Him. And it is funny, let me mention this, and also when you guys are back in Ecuador, down in Ecuador, I'm sorry, and you are giving your testimony. So sometimes um, as translators, we are taking more time in translation. How come? Because, for example, you can say like, okay, guys, this is my, my testimony. I was uh, drinking uh, coffee in a Starbucks, and then somebody approached me, shared the Bible. When I'm translating, I need to explain to the Ecuadorians first, what is a Starbucks? Well, this is a coffee shop. You know, he was in a coffee shop. It's a, a coffee shop with coffee laced with gold. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Very physical. Yeah, so, you know, so my idea is that, you know, we are learning from each other. We are learning from one culture to the other one. Very good. Well, we've got five minutes left, so we'll take one more question. Yeah, Wilma. So great question about the, in particular, the orphanage or the, or the, 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 the um, foster house. Um, can Americans adopt? Um, what, what is the government aid there? But in addition to that, Javi, give, give it, we got four minutes now, so do this quick. You, I know you can do it. Uh, a brief history of some of the ministry things that the Indiana churches, not just Calvary, but the Indiana church, most of this work was done by other churches, not ours. Uh, have been able to accomplish with this particular ministry? Mm -hmm. Well, um, let me share this story with you. And uh, Brother Dave Wilson, when we were uh, in, uh, working in Ecuador, he was, uh, his mission was, you know, to make disciples, teach uh, the, the, the pastors. But one day the Lord spoke to his heart saying, don't forget about the children of the widows. So he started thinking about this. So it was a, a command from the Lord for him. So we ended up in, in Puyo, which is a, a city in the jungle. And we reached this orphanage. When we first arrived in that place, you know, it's supposed the local government is taking care of them, providing food, providing clothes, providing everything. But no, they were, even some kids, they were um, sleeping on a mattress of this high on the ground. So it was a mess. Then Brother Dave started, you know, asking to the um, churches in the U.S. to help them out. Then churches from here, they were providing mattresses, beds. Even they were, you know, giving more devices like an, an oven. Why is that for? Then the teachers in that place, they start teaching the ladies, I mean the girls, you know, how to bake. Uh, some bread or whatever they need in order one day they can go out and have, uh, they can make a living. So, but the government, it's supposed is providing food for them every week. But sometimes, and it's sad, but it's true, the local government is saying like, oh, we don't have a, the budget for this week, so you, you see what you can do. So even um, we are trying to help them out. The, there is a pastor a Baptist pastor in that city, in Puyo. So he's teaching the kids already. He's gathering together with them once a week. He has, he's taking them to church for Sunday service, but still there's a lot of needs in that place. Like, you know, uh, we need some um, uh, clothing, you know, even uh, soap or shampoo, they really need it. So. Yeah, that's the reality in that place, but so, we are trying to help. Um, it's very rare that America would be able to adopt an Ecuadorian child. Yeah, uh, I was about to talk about Oh, it. go ahead. You know, our uh, laws in Ecuador, um, they are kind of ridiculous. Uh, if you are trying to adopt a baby, it's going to take you at least two or three years, um, you know, in order you can adopt him or her. So it's, it's very hard. It's about the the laws in, in, in Ecuador. But yeah, you, you can do it, but it's a long process. And, and there are lots of complications along those lines. If there if there's in, uh, indigenous blood, then it's more difficult because uh, just a variety of things, so. Yeah. Uh, some things that you need to do, um, we have some time. Okay, I'm yeah, gonna... take, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure, in this, um, uh, if you want to um, adopt a kid, you need to go to Ecuador, you need to the first six months, you need to, uh, every weekend, go out with him, you know, try to hang around with him. That's the, the first step. Then the other one. So it's kind of hard for an American, you know, to be there that long term. All right. We're at the very end. Is, 
No. Uh, the gov if if you got a job and you can and the, your your boss uh, want to give you the chance, the opportunity to get uh, medical insurance, then you get it. If not, you, we got a public system that you can go into the the public hospitals and and get medicine, but you need to beg for it. You know, because it's not like easy like here in the U.S. You can get, you know, the people taking care of you at that very moment and, you know, now over there, even if you are dying, you have to wait till they said, okay, it's, now is your turn. You got to wait to die. <laughs> Pretty much. It, yeah. It, it, it's not the same type of system we're used to. It is, uh, when we first went, when I first went, the first time I went, you know, we were told there is no social service type system. You don't work, you don't eat. I think some of that maybe has changed a little bit with the changes of leadership over the years. But a lot of it depends on who is in charge of the country. Uh, their, their laws fluctuate a lot quicker than maybe our system does and based on who the leader is. And then you get, like we were talking, I mentioned the, the Javi had mentioned to me the uh, indigenous uh, peoples were upset and they sometimes they'll block roads and, and, and protest about gas prices or different things. And um, it's just a different uh, a worldview, different understanding, different upbringing. Uh, again, that's one of the beautiful things of our mission partners. We don't have to worry about that. We've never run into personal problems. There have been a few backpacks stolen, different things along those lines over the years. But minor in the scope of everything and it's always worked out the lord's always taking care of us and our our partners take great care of us and the and here, here's one thing dave wilson has told me from day one for the first time he got back from ecuador and started inviting me to go with him was the hand of the lord is on that country right now the spirit of the lord is opening hearts and doors the luke 10 2 passage the lord of the harvest has told us that the fields are ripe he's shown us the fields are ripe so we need to be praying that the harvesters will come. And uh, he, he's right. And so our partners can't do it on their own. One of the things Javi told us Sunday night was if he goes up to somebody on the street and starts sharing the gospel with them, they kind of wave him off. They don't give him much attention. Javi and I walk up together and he says, my gringo friend wants to talk to you. They'll sit down for two hours and talk to me. Just a different, and he's, he may be saying all the stuff, but because I'm with him, it'll make a difference. Or if you're with him, it'll make a difference. So whether you're with us here tonight, you're on Facebook, if you want to go to Ecuador, call me, see me, write me, email me. Um, Dave Wilson would love to hear from you on, on mission2.org. Uh, Javi's ministry is, is mission, Connection. mission Connection and uh, great partners. So thank you for giving us this time. I'm going to ask, usually, actually, I'm going to, we'll, we'll, I was going to say, I'm going to have a Javi pray us out of here, but we need to pray over Javi before we go. So uh, we're going to do that, kind of like we did with David a few weeks ago. I'm going to have Javi stand here, and uh, you guys can come and join me if you'd like, and I'll pray for, pray for him as we dismiss tonight. Again, if you want to give to any of the things we've talked about, you're welcome to. We're not, Javi's not here to beg for money, but Javi does need support to make the work happen. Prayers, prayers, prayers. That's the priority. And uh, guys, also you can uh, follow up uh, the ministry Mission Connection in, on Facebook and Instagram. So Mission Connection, Mission Facebook Connection. and Instagram. Yes, and then you're gonna know, and there's uh, updates every time that our work in Ecuador. Thank you guys again, and I'm ready for the prayer. All right, and don't forget, church, before we pray for Javi, Brian is on an airplane, waiting on them to get it ready to take off because it was overweight. The airplane was, not Brian. Well, maybe Brian. I don't know. Uh, okay, so he did get taken off on his way to Paris. So pray for Brian as he heads out to Africa as we pray for Javi. Let's pray, guys. Father God, we do thank you for our, for our Ecuadorian partners. We thank you for David who was here with us a few weeks ago. But tonight is our privilege to have Javi with us. And Lord, we just thank you for his friendship, for the brotherhood that we share in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the opportunities of the past, but also the opportunities of the future. As we look forward to working together, whether it be in person, through financial uh, connections, or through prayer. Lord, we just thank you that, that we get to be a part of what you're doing around the world on multiple continents. Um, 
It's one God for all people who will believe through the name of Jesus. Father, be with Javi while he's here in the States. Give him safety and travel as he comes and goes. As he searches out for, for the right uh, partners to continue the work that you're doing. Uh, prayer partners, uh, ministry partners, financial partners. All the things he needs to make this work. Uh, your work, your calling, uh, successful. Lord, we, we thank you um, for all that you've done so far. And we look forward to the next report as we continue to watch you work in great ways. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the love of this church that loves each other, loves you, and loves our ministry partners. Thank you for the giving heart and attitude of Calvary. Lord, multiply uh, our opportunities uh, and your glory as you do it. Lord, bless us now as we leave this place. Help us be faithful about your business. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, everybody, have a good week. We'll see you Sunday.